This woodcut is the third in Dürer's evocative apocalypse series, which comprises 15 scenes drawn from the Book of Revelation. It illustrates the four horsemen of the apocalypse, as described in the Old Testament, with death, famine, war, and plague mounted on their horses, mercilessly trampling over powerless individuals. Hovering above this scene is an angel, set against a dramatic backdrop of clouds and streaming light. His genius in the realm of woodcut artistry lies in his ability to conceptualize intricate and complex images as negative forms, a technique necessitated by the woodcut process, where the non-printing areas are carved away to leave the design in relief. Prior to Döner's intervention, woodcut was considered a somewhat rough technique. Yet, Döner transformed it, drawing blocks with a finesse unrivaled by his predecessors. Much of the actual cutting was executed by skilled craftsmen who meticulously followed Dürer's intricate designs. In the biblical accounts, the horsemen are typically identified by the color of their horses. Limited by the black and white constraints of woodcut art, Dürer instead focuses on their weapons, a bow, a sword, a set of scales, and a trident, as their defining features. Death is further characterized as a withered, bearded old man on a skeletal horse. The horsemen are depicted side by side in slightly overlapping positions, indicating their sequential arrival as described in the text. Death, the last to arrive, brings along hell represented by a monstrous creature swallowing a man adorned with a bishop's mitre and crown. The woodcut shows that the apocalypse spares no one, with clergy and nobility suffering alongside the rest of society, their contemporary attire making the scene relatable to 16th century viewers. Imagery of the apocalypse was especially popular as the year 1500 approached a time many believe would bring the second coming of Christ. This self-portrait, where the artist renders himself as Christ, might be perceived as presumptuous or even sacrilegious. However, it likely represents a combination of deep religious conviction and assured acknowledgement of his own artistic mastery. The piece features Albrecht Dürer, the painter, endowed with divine gifts. Against a bare background, he meets the viewer's gaze directly. His right hand is raised to his chest, fingers splayed in what appears to be a gesture of blessing. Cascading curls reach down to his shoulders, and his signature monogram is displayed prominently to his right. Adjacent to his left is a Latin script which translates to I, Albrecht Dürer of Nuremberg, rendered myself in lasting colours at the age of 28. Renaissance portraiture often favoured a three-quarter stance within a naturalistic environment. Dürer's departure to a frontal orientation against a nondescript dark background evokes the holy visages from the Middle Ages, particularly icons of Christ Pantocrator. With the hand gesture of blessing, long dark brown hair, noting that Dürer's own hair was a lighter shade, 
and idealized features, he deliberately mirrors the image of Christ. The timing of the work, created in a year fraught with apocalyptic associations, underscores the painting's role as a profound declaration of Dürer's self-awareness and devout Christian faith. Dürer, always mindful of his public persona, frequently included self-representations in his artwork. This 1500 self-portrait was ultimately presented to the Nuremberg City Council by Dürer himself, where it remained on public display well into the early 19th century. Dürer's portrayal of the fall, depicting the pivotal moment in Christian lore when humanity's first duo, Adam and Eve, defied God by consuming the fruit from the tree of knowledge, stands out for its daring representation of humanity and nature. Crafted shortly after his return from Italy, this engraving reflects more on his fascination with the Renaissance and a homage to his homeland than on the Genesis narrative. The characters are modeled after classical statues, embodying the perfect human proportions and stances advocated by ancient Greco-Roman artists and architects. The dense foliage in the background echoes the German woodlands, familiar to the artist, thereby seamlessly integrating Italianate figures into his native setting. Adam is depicted holding a twig from which hangs a sign, declaring the artist's name as Albert Dürer of Nuremberg, in Latin, boldly asserting his German identity. At the twig's end sits a parrot, whose calls were once interpreted as Ave Maria, making the bird a symbol for the Holy Virgin Mary, who, in Catholic doctrine, is seen as rectifying Eve's primordial transgression. Besides the serpent, which is directly identified with the devil in the scripture, each creature carries its own allegorical meaning. The rabbit, cat, and elk symbolize the four humors. Ancient Greek and Roman medicine believed in four unique bodily fluids influencing one's temperament and health, with any imbalance affecting both. In Dürer's Eden, the elk symbolizes black bile and melancholy. The ox stands for fame and a phlegmatic demeanor. The rabbit signifies blood and a sanguine nature. And the cat represents yellow bile, associated with a choleric temperament. Dürer's 1506 trip to Venice culminated in the production of the Feast of the Rosary, a significant large format artwork. This painting depicts the Virgin Mary at the center of a gathering of men and cherubs, receiving a rose wreath from two cherubs while she cradles the Christ child. To her right stands Saint Dominic, with figures believed to be Pope Julius and Emperor Maximilian kneeling in the forefront. The assembly around the throne is thought to consist largely of members from Venice's German community, including Dürer, who is portrayed holding a paper inscribed with Albrecht Dürer. The German completed this in five months, 1506. The Feast of the Rosary stands as a prominent testament to the cultural exchange between 16th century Venice and the art hubs of Northern Europe. It masterfully blends Northern European artistic traits, like intricate composition and background landscapes, with Venetian features such as the Sacra Conversazione theme and musical angels, 
reminiscent of Giovanni Bellini's work, notably his San Zaccaria altar piece, 1505. In this piece, Durer notably used Venetian pigments, including a significant amount of lapis lazuli, a choice diverging from his typical use of azurite in his Nuremberg creations. This melding of northern and Italian artistic elements, merging Venetian vibrancy in colour and illumination with the Germanic tradition of religious altar pieces, exemplifies Durer's ability to bridge the artistic practices of both regions. Commissioned by German merchants for the San Bartolomeo Church in Rialto, the incorporation of Venetian elements into this German-created piece not only showcases the patrons' allegiance to Venice, but also their national pride. Durer's ambition to outshine his Venetian peers by embracing and elevating their artistic techniques and styles was a significant motivation. Despite being a celebrated artist back home, Durer sought recognition in the Italian art scene. He expressed contentment with his achievement in a letter, stating that he had silenced all those painters who had said, I was good at engraving, but at painting did not know how to handle colours. The Praying Hands by Albrecht Dürer is possibly one of the most widely recognized images globally, symbolizing devotion and Christianity across centuries. Through modern printing methods unforeseen by Dürer over 500 years ago, this drawing has found its way onto various mediums, including Bibles, T-shirts, and even Andy Warhol's tombstone. Crafted with ink and pencil, on self-made blue paper, this artwork was initially conceived not as an independent piece, but as a preparatory sketch for an altar piece commissioned by Jacob Heller in 1507, which portrayed the Virgin Mary's coronation for a Frankfurt church. The depicted hands were meant to be those of an apostle, kneeling beside Mary's tomb. Despite the original altar piece's destruction in a 1729 fire, a detailed replica survives in Vienna's Albertina Museum. This print stands as an early artistic exploration of melancholia or depression, significantly contributing to the myth of the suffering artist. Melancholia is one of three masterpieces known as the Master Engravings, created by Dürer in 1514. Alongside Saint Jerome in his study, and Night, Death and the Devil. The piece features a winged female figure engrossed in thought, casually holding a compass, adorned with a wreath and surrounded by various symbolic items. A foreign putto, and a gaunt dog accompany her, while the bat bearing the title flies above. Erwin Panofsky, a renowned art historian, interpreted this piece as Dürer's spiritual self-portrait, mirroring the artist's personal battle with melancholia. During the Renaissance, melancholy was often associated with creative brilliance. Dürer's inclusion of numerous elements in this engraving is seen as a representation of his artistic mindset. The neglected tools scattered around signify geometry, a discipline crucial to Dürer as an artist, and symbolize the unfulfilled potential. An hourglass, symbolizing life's fleeting nature, a ladder leading nowhere, and empty scales, all convey feelings of lethargy and lack of direction. The polyhedron adds a layer of complexity challenging the Renaissance emphasis on linear perspective. Both the central figure of Melancholia and the Putto possess wings yet remain earthbound, burdened by their heavy thoughts. The noticeably thin dog appears too frail to stand. 
The artwork communicates a sense of overwhelming defeat and inertia amidst disorder and desolation. Despite the themes of artistic frustration it depicts, the engraving's meticulous execution underscores Döhler's status as a premier engraver of his era. Since its initial release in 1515, Döhler's Rhinoceros has remained among his most celebrated works. This woodcut illustrates the artist's rendition of an Indian rhinoceros, shown in profile standing on a small mound of earth. The artwork's date and Döhler's distinctive monogram are positioned above the rhino's head on the right side. An accompanying inscription provides a detailed description, noting its arrival in Lisbon for King Emmanuel of Portugal from India in 1515. The text describes the rhinoceros as having the color of a speckled tortoise covered in thick scales, comparable in size to an elephant but shorter in stature and nearly impervious. It mentions the animal's sharp horn, used against its purported enemy, the elephant, depicting a vivid scene of attack. The narrative also highlights the rhino's speed, agility and intelligence. The rhinoceros featured in Dürer's work was a diplomatic gift from Sultan Muzaffar of Gujarat to the Portuguese governor in India, who then sent it to King Manuel of Lisbon and eventually, it was intended for Pope Leo in Rome. However, en route to Rome, after being displayed in Marseille to King Francis of France, the animal tragically drowned when its ship succumbed to a storm. Dower created this piece without ever having seen the rhinoceros, relying solely on second-hand descriptions. Thus, the animal is depicted with armor-like thick plates and a texture of circular marks, along with an imaginative second horn on its back and reptilian legs, diverging from a true rhinoceros in appearance. As the first living rhinoceros in Europe since the third century ad, its arrival ignited immense curiosity and interest. Dürer's choice of woodcut for this depiction facilitated widespread and efficient reproduction of the image. Following the original 1515 print, eight more editions were produced over the next three centuries, with some versions containing additional text. The iconic image found its way into scientific publications and inspired other artistic creations, including architectural and sculptural works from the Renaissance to the 20th century, illustrating its lasting impact on European art and culture. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me continue creating more content like this. Thank you.